Afternoon, everybody. We are back here at day three of the Coffee Holden Prostate Cancer Academy. Um, yesterday, we got a chance to speak with two uh, new attendees to the conference and hear about their insights. Today, we are with a veteran attendee, Dr. Mina Zabedi. How are you? Hi, thank you. Thank you, Finn. Um, thank you for having me. Uh, it's good to see you. Um, I know you've been a, you've been to all all the conferences that prostate cancer has put on. Um, you've been here how many years now? It is my fourth time, and not every year that I am here. But I mean, looking to the last six years, how many times I was here, I was here the fourth time, and it is every time is a tremendous honor to be here because it's a very very select number of people that they come to this conference is the best in the world in prostate cancer. Well, that's, uh, that's great. So I know everybody loves seeing you here. You are a great person to have around. Um, tell us a little bit more about your research at the University of British Columbia. What I do, I am more interested or my, my, pro my research program, I look to why men with prostate cancer after, after hormone therapy, they become resistant and I look into very specific type of the resistance. I'm looking for those patients that they become resistant and their cancer becomes so aggressive and we call it the neuroendocrine prostate cancer. And we're trying now and we were very lucky to identify a driver for this uh, neuroendocrine prostate cancer after, after resistance to novel or more than hormone therapy and now we are developing drug, and that is happening because of the Prostate Cancer Foundation uh, with Challenger Award. Excellent. Now, when you come to the uh, Coffee Holden or the Scientific Retreat, which comes up again this October, um, what do you think has changed over the last maybe 10 years at these uh, uh, conferences or these retreats, and what can other new scientists learn while they attend them? Well, I, the, the thing that I wish for every scientist that they can have a chance to at least come once to an event by the Prostate Cancer Foundation. I want to say it again, they are the best of the best in the world doing research on prostate cancer. And what is changing, you know, and you, may, you look at my, come like you said, the world veteran, and you made me feel like I'm a very old <laughs> <laughs> woman and scientist, but what is the best of it, it is what I saw as changing. In 2010, when I became a new investigator funded by Prostate Cancer Foundation, I was looking up to these people that they were the real veteran, and today it is the change. Things are changing, and my class today, I see it here. I see it in the field in general because of the support, early support that we had from Passive Cancer Foundation. I believe that a lot of us, or some of us, become the leaders in the field today, and they are completely changing how we do research on prostate cancer and also how we do the treatment for prostate cancer. And that's happening because of how prostate cancer fostered that early in our career with talent. You mentioned the Prostate uh, Cancer Foundation Young and Best Educator Program, you, of which you are a recipient. Yes. Um, you're also a recipient of the Prostate Cancer Challenge Award. Tell us a little bit about both of those programs. Okay, we know, uh, like I just said, I was a Prostate Cancer Foundation Young Investigator in 2010. And what Prostate Cancer did to me, it just taught me how to be a mentor. And, and being a, an awardee from Pakistan Cancer Foundation in 2010 and learning about mentoring being fostered here at the foundation, I was capable or, or you know, had a chance to mentor a postdoc in my lab and my postdoc at a young investigator in 2013 and when she was finishing, I mentored another postdoc in my lab and I got 2016. I have to say that I've been fortunate to be supported by the Prostate Cancer Foundation, but more importantly, I was really fortunate to be part of this family that made me who I am today, not only as a scientist, but also as a human being, as a mentor. This is incredible, I have to say, and I will say it out loud, PCF changed my life in different aspects, as a person, as a mentor, and as a scientist. Regarding the Challenger Award, this is a really, really interesting story because of the PCF and how they foster us and how they made us having confidence, collaborating. I made a discovery and I found that this 
important uh, molecule or protein that is driving this neuroendocrine process cancer. I team up with another young investigator, Misha Beltran from Cornell, which is a leader in the field of neuroendocrine, and together we put this challenge word that when we started, it was all, you know, like the veteran that they used to have that. And here we are, two women, two scientists, and uh, that they were younger investigator and we went forward and we applied and, and we were awarded last year. And now the work is progressing extremely well and we hope we're gonna have a drug in the future for this neuroendocrine process cancer patient. Well, congratulations and we're all looking forward to that. Um, you bring up a good point, um, women in prostate cancer research. What brought you to the uh, world of prostate cancer research? I'm just gonna be sassy, why not? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it is, it is, you know, we have husbands, fathers, and brothers. This is not about men and women, this, it is all about us as a human being. And, and as, you know, I'm proud to be in this field, and it's such an important field. And, and there is so many things to do. And, and I believe as a woman, if perhaps I didn't have the support of PCF, I don't know what could happen. But I, I believe that support, and also as we know that Prostate Cancer Foundation organized the Women Day at, uh, at the retreats, and all that is supposed to be helping us, empowering us to be who we are today. Oh, that's so exciting. So you gave a, a, a talk yesterday, I know it was well received. Who are you? Who have you seen, or who are you most looking forward to see the remainder of this conference while you're still here? Well, you know, and, and it was, and it is, it was, you know, when I came and I looked to, uh, to the program, it was this session about microenvironment. Like we talk about this cancer cell, but we don't know what happened around these cancer cells. You know, what is it is like when you're swimming in a pool, like the cancer cells are those who people that they're swimming, but what about the pool? You know, the pool also, if it's not clean, can also affect people and have a rush. And that the way I was looking for that, I was looking for a specific talks uh, during this session. It was very interesting to learn from them how we can look to the whole thing in prostate cancer, but not be just narrow about one thing, because I don't work on what I call it the microenvironment. But coming here, it is a type of learning. Coming to the PCF is like going back to school and learning about new things, about things that you can integrate to your research program. And that was fantastic. It was a fantastic two day and a half. And, and like every time, it's a pleasure to be here. And, and I'm so proud of myself to be here. <laughs> Well, there's still a day and a half, Doctor. Thank you very much thank for you. coming. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And, um, so, uh, everybody, we will. Uh, that was our last interview. Have a great weekend, and uh, we'll share this across all our social media platforms. Thank you.